Activity 4.2 on the melting of ice. The aim is to find out what happens to the temperature of ice during melting. We're going to be doing the activity uh, using crushed ice, a data logger and a temperature sensor and we will take measurements for 20 minutes. Here we have the experimental setup. We have a retort stand holding a funnel that I've made out of an old plastic water bottle, so it's like a recycled uh, bottle funnel. And as the ice melts in there, the water from the melting ice is going to drip out of the bottle. I've poked some holes in the bottle cap into that cup okay, so that it doesn't make a mess. And besides that, we've also got a data logger which we will use to record the temperature and a temperature sensor. Now, for this experiment to work properly, okay, this is the temperature sensor. For it to work properly, you see this long metal bit of the temperature sensor? This is the bit that senses the temperature. So all of this metal bit, or as much of it as possible, has to be in contact with the ice. Okay, that's the tricky bit in this experiment. If the ice is only touching the tip of it, you're not going to get an accurate measurement of the temperature of the ice. So what we need to do is to try and mash the ice up into very small pieces, try and crush the ice so that we can uh, hopefully get a more accurate temperature reading. Let's go and crush the ice now. Okay, this is how, this is how you crush ice. You take a rag, you put the ice cubes in it. Okay, the ice cubes here are kind of broken into a chunk. Okay, it's a bit messy. I'm trying to get a good, accurate reading. So you put some ice cubes in a piece of cloth and then you bash it against the hard surface. Break the ice into smaller pieces, which will help to get you a more accurate reading on the temperature sensor. Let's break up some more ice. And okay, that should be enough for our experiment. Oh. Now, let's fill this with crushed ice, a lot of small bits of ice, smaller bits of the water ones for this experiment. The best kind of ice for this actually would be the kind of ice Shavings like they use for ice kachang. I don't have an ice shaving machine, so this is going to have to do Just crush ice from hitting ice on the floor in a cloth. That should do it. Okay, put this in the fridge. Someone else can use it. Now we take out our temperature sensor, turn on our data logger with the switch over here. Yeah, it's on. Plug our temperature sensor into channel number one. Then, okay, let's see if we can see this. Okay, then we select the sensor type, change it from no sensor to um, should be auto detecting, but it's not. So I have to manually set it to. We set it to temperature sensor channel one, temperature minus ten to one hundred and ten. Then we. We click on the, the clock icon, set the sampling rate to 10 samples a second, that's alright. Okay, that seems to be alright. And the duration monitor, let's set it to, not 10 minutes, let's set it to 20 minutes. So we're going to run this experiment for 20 minutes. And we leave our manually stop done. Okay, now we put the Temperature sensor into the middle of the ice. Make sure it's touching as much of the ice as possible. 
press the green button to start and it starts monitoring and it's now showing a temperature of minus 1.1 degrees Celsius you see I can show that to you on the video camera the channel 1 minus 1.2 degrees Celsius okay so the starting temperature was minus 1.2 Okay, here we are at the uh, melting ice experiment. I've poked some holes in the bottle cap so that as the ice melts, the ice water can drip out into the cup so that we're measuring the temperature just of the melting ice and not the ice water. Okay, now taken three temperature readings. Okay, you can see there, it's now minus 1.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, minus 1.2 so my initial reading was minus 1.2 then it went down to minus 1.3 which is probably the correct temperature okay when I first put the temperature sensor into the ice the temperature sensor was at a higher temperature than the ice so it took time to cool down to the temperature of the ice which is probably at the second minute okay now the ice itself is starting to warm up that's why it's gone back from minus 1.3 to minus 1.2 degrees Celsius Okay, it's been 10 minutes now, and okay, as you can see from the graph on the temp on the uh, data logger, the temperature has remained constant at minus 1.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, the temperature has remained constant. Now it's about 12 minutes at minus 1.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, ice is slowly melting and the temperature reading on the data logger is still minus 1.2 degrees Celsius. It's been that way all the time. It's now 15 minutes gone. Okay, let's have a look at my readings. Okay. Minus 1.2, minus 1.3, and then minus 1.2 all the way. Now, you may ask me, why is the temperature of the melting ice minus 1.2 degrees Celsius when the science textbook says that it should be 0 degrees Celsius? Okay, that's a very good question. Let me try and um, answer it for you. If you look at the color of the water that is uh, collecting here, let me zoom in a bit. Okay, you can tell, let me put it on a white background. Okay, that the water is not white. It's not clear. It's a bit murky. So, it would seem that this ice was made from water that contains okay, some impurities. Okay, some of that could be from the cloth that I was breaking the ice in. But it could also be from the pipes that the water went through. Maybe the pipes haven't been used for a long time and so there's some rust in the pipes. So if they are like dissolved mineral salts in the water, that can alter the freezing and the melting point of the water. Okay, dissolved um, salts, salt actually will actually lower the freezing and melting point of water. Which is why in cold countries in the winter time, they spread salt on the roads to make the ice melt. Because it lowers the the melting and the freezing point of water so that the ice will melt below zero degrees Celsius. That's why the ice here is melting at minus 1.2 degrees Celsius. But, okay, that, that aside, you can see that the temperature is remaining constant. Okay, a, let me keep track of the time. Okay, it's time for me to take another reading. Yes, it's still 1.2. Now, um, where was I? Yes, the, the, they spread salt on the roads and impurities lower the freezing and melting point of water so that here it's actually melting at minus 1.2 degrees Celsius instead of 0 degrees Celsius. And, um, but the, the interesting thing with that is that it's still a constant temperature. Okay. Now, you know that um, 
heat flows from an area of, of higher temperature Okay, from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. So if you have the room temperature here, it's actually 31 degrees Celsius. This is 31. And the ice here is at minus 1.2 degrees Celsius. The direction of heat flow will be from the higher temperature to the lower temperature. The, the heat is going to flow from the, the surroundings of the, the ice, the room, into the ice. It's going to go into the plastic bottle and also into the top of the ice that's exposed there. Um, by a process of conduction. Okay. The plastic is not a very good conductor of heat, but it still will conduct heat. Okay. So the plastic is going to warm up. Because it, um, first of all, the plastic is going to be cool because it loses heat to the ice. It's in contact with the ice. But because the plastic is cooler than the room temperature, it's at a lower temperature than the room, heat from the surroundings will flow into the plastic of the bottle, thus raising the temperature of the plastic bottle, making it um, warmer than the temperature of the ice. Then heat the heat in the plastic bottle is going to flow into the ice because the ice is at a lower temperature than the plastic bottle in which it is in contact. So, heat flows from the room, the surroundings, into the plastic and from the plastic into the ice and also on the top, directly from the surrounding air into the ice and the ice will start to melt. Now, when you supply heat to a solid, so you take a you know, remember the, the experiment you did with heating the, the metal ball and putting it through the hoop? Now, if you heat something like metal, you apply heat to it, the temperature is going to increase because you're supplying heat energy. And that's normally what happens when you heat something, the temperature increases, it becomes hotter. But the ice is not becoming hotter. Okay, a lot of heat is going into the ice, heat from the surrounding is, is going into the ice. But why is it that the ice is still at minus 1.2 degrees Celsius? Okay, if, it was, if it was ice made from pure water, it would be at zero degrees Celsius. Why is it melting at the same temperature instead of the temperature increasing? If instead of ice, instead of ice I had here a bottle filled with a lump of, of a metal, say iron. Say I had a, a bottle filled with a lump of solid iron, and I took the iron out of the freezer, so the iron was at, say, minus 1.3 degrees Celsius. Can you expect that as the, temperature, as the heat from the, the surroundings travels into the, the metal, it will warm up and in fact it will. But here we have ice and the heat from the surrounding, surrounding room is going into the ice and the ice is not warming up. Okay, the temperature of the ice is staying the same. Okay, now why is that? That is because the heat energy that is being transferred from the surroundings into the ice is being used to melt the ice. It's being used to change the state of the ice from a solid to a liquid. It takes energy to do that. It takes energy to change um, matter from one state to another, from solid to liquid. Um, of course, the, the reverse is true as well. When you remove heat energy from, from water, okay, say you have water in this cup, this water is warming up to room temperature. Okay? But if I had uh, this water and I put it in the freezer, okay, the, the temperature of the water would be higher than the temperature of the surroundings in the freezer because the freezer is very cold. So the heat flow, the direction of, of um, heat flow would be from the water, if it was in the cup, from the water to the plastic cup to the surroundings in the freezer. Because the surroundings in the freezer are at a, at a much lower temperature than the water. So the water will cool down, it will go from room temperature to zero degrees, and then it will stay at zero degrees while it changes into ice. Because um, once all the enough heat has been removed so that the, the water has all become ice, only then will the temperature de decrease to minus 1.1, minus 1.2, minus 1.3 into the, the minus temperatures. So the same thing with melting. When you have ice and you, you leave it at room temperature, which is higher than the temperature of the ice, the ice will start to melt. But while it is melting, the temperature here is, is constant. It's, it's a constant 1.2 degrees. In fact, now, okay, this is my last reading. In 20 minutes, okay, the ice hasn't finished melting, but I'm going to end the experiment here. The ice will be here until the whole bottle melts. Let me show you my readings. In fact, let me show you the data logger. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the graph. As you can see, okay, I've magnified the the scale so that you, um, I've changed the scale so that it's easier to see on on the graph. Okay, at, at the front, there were some ups and downs because that is when the, the temperature sensor was cooling down to the temperature of the ice. But after that, it's a straight line. Okay, it stayed at 
exactly 1.2 degrees Celsius the whole time. And again, okay, remember, the melting point of ice is of pure water. Okay, if it's ice made from pure water, the melting point is 0 degrees Celsius. The reason that this ice is melting at minus 1.2 degrees Celsius is that it contains impurities. Okay, the impurities in ice here, as I said, it could be um, rust from the pipes, and it could also be the, the chemicals that they add during water treatment. Okay, during water treatment, they, they, they used to add chlorine. Nowadays, they add um, chloramine. It's a chemical that kills germs, and that could perhaps lower the melting and the freezing points of water. So to, to do this experiment properly, we actually should have used ice made from distilled water, but I don't have that at the moment. But anyway, this goes to show that um, the temperature of ice when it's melting stays the same. It's a straight line. Okay, this, the horizontal axis here is time. The vertical axis is temperature. Now, let's have a look at our records of our experimental results. If you look at the table, my first reading was minus 1.2 degrees Celsius at 0 minutes. At 2 minutes, it went down to minus 1.3 degrees Celsius. Then at, from 4 minutes onwards till the end of the experiment, the temperature of the melting ice stayed the same. It did not change. It was always minus 1.2 degrees Celsius. Note, the melting and freezing point of pure water is 0 degrees Celsius. But, the ice we used contains impurities which lower its melting point from 0 degrees to minus 1.2 degrees Celsius. Still, the temperature of the ice stays constant. It doesn't change as it melts because the heat it absorbs from the surroundings is used to change its state from solid to liquid. So, it doesn't warm up. The heat is used to melt the ice and not to make it become warmer. Once the ice has finished melting into water, then the water can start to increase in temperature back up to room temperature. If you would like to watch a video on how uh, salt is used to melt ice on roads in cold countries during winter, click on the link here.